Good morning, I'm Kristen Folletti and welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Tuesday, June 11th, 2013. NetApp's new version of their flagship storage OS, Cluster Data on Tap, has been announced today. Join us now to provide details on what this new software can do is SiliconANGLE founder, John Furrier. Good morning, John. Good to have you back. Good to be here. Thanks for uh, having me. So NetApp has introduced a new storage operating system clustered on tap as their main innovation for their existing and future customers. So John, what's so important about this announcement? Let's start with that. Well, I think it's important because uh, all the big competition, IBM and HP, are all having a big show here this week in Las Vegas. That's where I'm at right now. Um, but fundamentally, the bigger trend is that the cloud and Amazon has shown the way for kind of a new new way to do things in, for businesses and information technology. And with cloud infrastructure and, say, big data, the tsunami of data that's being generated by mobile devices and uh, you know, you're seeing things with the NSA prism, big data is being used for a lot of things, including surveillance as well as business value. It's creating a massive uh, innovation uh, boom. And this is creating a lot of wealth opportunities and quite frankly, refactoring the market. So the marketplace um, of big companies supplying IT technology, computing, storage, and networking uh, is under massive reconstruction. It's reforming in real time. And it's, it's happening on an accelerated basis. So this is an opportunity for companies uh, to, to change their leadership position and take new territory or, or get new leadership position in their products. And what NetApp is introducing today is fundamentally an, a shift to this new model of software-driven enterprises, software-led in, in infrastructure. And the clustered ONTAP is a um, huge announcement for NetApp in the sense that it's going to be uh, the fundamental platform or operating system for all of their storage devices, which literally has been installed in you know, thousands and thousands of corporate enterprises, large-scale enterprises, medium-sized enterprises. And NetApp has been a very, very successful storage company, but yet is still smaller than, say, EMC, IBM, and HP relative to their size as a company. So this shift to this new operating system is a major uh, platform upgrade and change for NetApp, which gives them uh, the ability to kind of hold down their install base, customer base, as well as get new customers. So uh, it's a significant announcement for NetApp in the sense that they are betting the company on this approach. Will software-defined storage be uh, the preferred architecture? And the answer from our standpoint is yes, because that is where everyone's going. And I think Amazon and cloud in particular, and big data uh, tsunami that's happening is, is really driving that trend. So this is a really big deal for NetApp and, and their customers. So John, why is NetApp introducing this clustered on tap? And what sort of trends are, that, are you seeing in the software-defined storage market? You know, NetApp is uh, introducing some, some compelling software that they've been working on for many years that's going to modernize um, their customer base as well as bring them new business in, in the area of software-defined storage. And this is kind of really kind of points to the big trend of what cloud has done, Amazon and OpenStack and other environments. Plus, big data has driven a major transformation for large enterprises. And, uh, you know, the key thing, as I pointed out on, on my blog post today on Forbes, is that, um, you know, anytime there's a market reformation, there's always opportunities for uh, new new leadership positions, and NetApp is definitely taking advantage of that. And and they've always been a great software-driven storage company. They have thousands and thousands of clients using their storage platform, and now they're they're mo essentially upgrading and modernizing their infrastructure with new software operating system. And really, what it is 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 that CIOs and large businesses are reinvesting in their infrastructure to essentially modernize their their capabilities to deliver cloud capabilities as well as big data and mobile, et cetera. So all the things that are happening with, with uh, Apple, iOS, cloud, and big data really points to the trends. And we saw that recently with the NSA PRISM thing where you know, we're seeing big data applications being used for surveillance, but more importantly, they're being used for business use. NetApp is realizing if they don't have a clustered uh, software environment, that they really will lose share. And this is a major step in the company's direction to do that. And these are opportunities. And cloud is creating new economics. And that's really the opportunity for NetApp. Explain to us what software-defined storage is. And why are all these storage companies introducing the concept of SDS? Uh, software-defined storage basically means that uh, new software is being written with virtualization and new technology to take storage from a place to store data to a place where you can store data and use it very, very fast and using it in a way that allows for scale. And with NetApp, 
in particular, as well as all the other storage vendors, IBM, EMC, HP, and others, the focus is on what they call scale-out storage, meaning to handle all the new cloud technologies and the big data uh, that's happening with mobile, you need massive amounts of more storage. So storage is continuing to grow, the drives and the, the, the systems that store all the data. However, getting the data out and making it usable, say on an iPhone or an Android phone, is really the focus, and that takes new software paradigms, and that's really what the hype's all about. And the reality is is that companies that don't offer software for developers to use will not be around much longer. So what NetApp's essentially doing is, is recognizing this transformation um, for essentially businesses, the chief information officer in these large companies, to take their storage, which is still growing and not stopping, and putting a software layer on top of it so that people can write new software, write new apps. And these apps is what people are focusing on. I heard Mark talking about the iOS kill switch, things around finding the device, being more agile and faster to write code. And this is really kind of where the tsunami is happening. Certainly on the consumer side, Android and, and iPhone has shown the way for these new applications. But these large companies where people work, it's just not that robust. So you're seeing, you're seeing more like an Android iPhone environment for corporations. This is actually leading to new opportunities for people to drive more, more business. So massive innovation boom for these large enterprises to provide new, new apps and new technologies. And with cloud, like an Amazon-like environment, and with software, companies like NetApp can actually provide an infrastructure that actually does that. So software is the key to success. We're seeing it on the consumer side and on the business side. You're seeing this massive transformation. So that kind of software layer allows for all kinds of new possibilities. So with NetApp, they have thousands of customers. So they have to kind of maintain that and, and support that as well as be positioned for, for new headroom and new capabilities so people can grow in the future. Mm -hmm. In this new modern era of storage, what is it that customers are seeking and looking for? Well, I think one thing is, is that you're seeing data uh, as, as the new currency, right? Someone was saying it's the new natural resource. Uh, data exhaust is a term that people use. And, you know, with the, the uh, NSA uh, news recently around the, the surveillance, you're seeing data is being used in a variety of different ways. So one thing that's clear is data is forever. The other thing is that you're seeing is people are used to services, really fast, new capabilities. No one wants to have, you know, a phone or a computer where it's just, you know, it's slow, bloated. And people are recognizing that with phones in particular, mobile phones, that's the first environment, that's the first screen people are using now. It's not the, not the other way around. It used to be the desktop uh, computer or the laptop first and then phone second. That's actually reversing the trend. You're seeing people use their phone connecting to other systems. So that's the user experience. On the business side, people are actually using phones and tablets and cloud to actually do work. So the people who actually have to you know, create value in businesses have to have this environment. This is a modern era that's really, really exploding. So you're seeing that service level. And ultimately, storage still needs to be around to be stored. So you know, NetApp is not going anywhere. EMC, HP, IBM are all retooling their technologies to be software-driven and software-led. software So that will enable new applications. And this is a massive transformation in businesses. So anyone who's been in the workforce since the 80s has seen this transition, and certainly people entering the workforce now want an environment where they're not locked down and chained to a desk. They want to use their phone wherever they are uh, on a mobile capability, and also they want real-time capability. They want the ability to access data. That is fundamentally changing the game. So how does NetApp compare to their competitors? Well, NetApp is interesting, right? I mean, they're a Silicon Valley company that's done extremely well. I wrote a post about this. They have a 20-year history of innovation. They've always been kind of a leader. But they're smaller than, say, EMC. EMC's got a lot more capability and, and, and investment behind it and marketing dollars. EMC, HP, and IBM all have big presence. And I think NetApp's focus here is to use software as a way to continue to innovate. Um, although smaller than the other guys, NetApp has thousands and thousands of customers. But you're seeing NetApp really trying to compete with EMC, HP, and IBM, as well as a slew of other startups that are coming out of Silicon Valley and around the world. So the storage paradigm is absolutely changing. Uh, and there's two things that are happening. One is more storage is being purchased to store data. At the same time, it's being commoditized, meaning people don't want to deal with 
stuff that's stored on device. They don't want it. They don't care where it's stored. They just want the data. So NetApp has a good story there because they can now offer that software. So again, this just comes back down to, you know, I don't care where it's stored. I just want to use the data. And that's where NetApp is trying to be competitive. And, you know, they have a, a tough road ahead of them, but ultimately this is a major announcement for them and, and will give them a chance to compete and aggressively take new territory. Again, when the marketplace is refactoring and, and reforming, all the chips are on the table to use my Vegas analogy, um, and, and the opportunity is who can play the right hand here and, and win that. And NetApp uh, thinks they can move the ball down the field and they have a right, a good approach here. Well, John, we don't have much time left, but quickly before you go, do you see software-defined storage by NetApp impacting their business model and their financial performance? Absolutely. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I posted on Forbes today, because it's much more of a business site. We have posts on SiliconANGLE as well, giving more of the detail analysis, and, and Wikibon has the, the deep dive on the technical side. But here's the bottom line for NetApp. They have thousands and thousands of customers, and a lot of their customers are looking at alternatives like open source, commodity hardware, and that is a major force to their business model and, and potentially has ramifications on the financial side. So they have an installed base of customers as well as new customers, the next Pinterest, the next Facebook want to buy drives, these new companies. So for them, this is a significant stake in the ground and allow them to maintain their existing business, provide those new capabilities of cloud and big data, at the same time offer that scale-out capability to attract new customers. So my, my take on this, this is going to be an upshot for their financials and ultimately their business. So we'll see how they roll that out. But ultimately, this puts them in a good position to continue on the financial side, which so I think it's good news for their stock price and certainly their their business business prospects. Well, John, thanks so much for sharing your insight with us this morning. Great to see you again. Thanks. And later this morning on News Desk, LG introduces a game service to its TVs and is Gorilla Glass coming to your automobile. But up next, SiliconANGLE founding editor Mark Risen Hopkins shares an exclusive interview with us regarding software-defined storage and the NetApp announcement.